Welcome to Sacred Magic. Violet is on a quest to bring sacredness back into our everyday experiences. Anyone can have an extraordinary life when they're able to tap into their sacred magic within. Violet and her guests will be sharing their divine passions, inspirations, and stories of connecting with their sacred magic. We are so happy you have joined us today. Let's get started with your host, the magical creator of Discover Your Spiritual Gifts, Violet Rain. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sacred Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Violet Rain, and I'm so excited about my guest today. My guest is Anthony. He's a psychic medium, resides in the beautiful western mountains of North Carolina. He's recognized as the Asheville medium. Anthony started his spiritual journey through shamanic studies for about five years. His journey led him to study mental mediumship exclusively with James Vaughn Prague, Mavis Patilla, Tommy, Tony Stockwell, to name a few. His travels have led him to study at the prestigious Arthur Finley College in England to further his advanced mediumship. Anthony presently is a full-time medium working with clients in person, by phone, by Zoom, and demonstrates mediumship in private groups on location. And just those that are listening, if you followed me you've known that I went to Lilydale this summer to study for a week an intensive week of mediumship to have some fun and that's where I got to meet Anthony and we became very connected so I'm excited to have him on our show today oh thank you so much Violet for having me um such an honor to be here and yes we met at Lilydale and um I was just Super, super excited because it was my first time presenting at Lilydale um, at the conference. And then I had a couple independent um, proposal workshops that I taught the following week, uh, which was a super success. I had um, so many people say to me how they enjoyed uh, my teaching and enjoyed me as a, as a person. And um, so anyways, it was a great experience. And we met and connected and had lunch. And you said, well, you know what, I'm going to have you be in one of my podcasts and maybe teach at your spiritual center. And I was like, oh, okay, wonderful. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. We're going to have him come out in 2025 in August to teach an intro mediumship class. And I'm already recruiting students that are ready to sign up. So we are excited to have Anthony, including myself, that will attend because I loved his teachings, his approach, and his style when I got to meet him in Lilydale. But that set aside for the moment, Anthony, talk to us about what led you to do what you do. What was your childhood like, and how did you get from that point to this point? Well, Violet, you know, um, my childhood, um, I lived in a very rural area, very a uh, farm oriented um, environment in eastern, um, northeastern Michigan, up near Alpina, in a little town called Posen, which is a Polish and German community. And uh, my parents had a restaurant there for um, a restaurant bar uh, type business for about 30 years. And um, so, um, you know, I was raised Catholic and, um, and, uh, my mom and dad were, um, you know, they were they they were churchgoers, but they weren't so conservative to where they did look outside the box. Uh, my mom was very intuitive naturally and would tell me things. And, um, you know, I, I had a few experiences um, that we shared together when I was a child and uh, unexplainable, but it kind of left me with uh, looking beyond, um, you know, beyond our Catholicism and the rules of Catholicism. And um, my mom was a very, you know, devoted Catholic and uh, so was my father. Um, but they would say, you know, there's experiences in life that you just can't explain. And um, it's, it's kind of the magic of life. And I was like, wow. Uh, you know, and I didn't really quite understand that as a child until I was about five and I had a visitation from a gentleman who uh, came to me in spirit and he was very much alive like you and I are speaking. 
And we had a, an abandoned home um, that it wasn't abandoned, I shouldn't say. It was a property uh, that had we had another home on our property. Uh, and the person um, who lived there originally owned all of the property. My parents bought it from their fam from his family. Uh, but this gentleman was probably in his 80s or early 90s uh, when he approached me in spirit and said, I had, you know, so much to show you. And, and um, I don't really remember what he said, but I remember his mouth never moved, but I could hear what he was saying. And so there was this telepathy, you know, going on with communication. Um, I felt very safe with him. And I knew that he was a gentle and kind soul. And he, I know he did tell me that, um, you know, you're here for a different reason. You know, that's all I remember. Um, and I, this may freak out some of your viewers, but uh, the next thing I knew that I was levitated about 150 feet above my family's property. Uh, it was a beautiful day with the sun kind of setting on a Sunday evening in the summer. And um, it there was nothing suspending me or I wasn't encaged or anything. I was just floating in midair. And I had four beings behind me that I could see that were light beings. And they said that we have you and you're safe, Anthony. So you have nothing to worry about. And um, I just remember my mom coming out, you know, in a panic looking for me because I was playing out there um and before dinner and she was you know calling me for dinner and she's panicking because she can't find me and we live in a very wooded area around our house so you know you can only imagine what the, the what she was going through um i don't remember everything that was said to me by these beings or i i just don't um but I, I I don't even remember being put back down on the ground, but I do remember telling them in a panic, you've got to put me down. And uh, the next thing I knew, I was behind our garage, which was separate from the house. And um, my mom came around the corner and was like, I've been looking for you for 25 minutes. Where have you been? And so I was up there for 25 minutes. You know, there was this time lapse. and. Um, it was freaking me out because she was angry, of course, and she's like, get in the house. And so I was reprimanded for, for not being around the house. And I never told my parents that story until I was much older. I was about 22 or 23. And my mom remembers it specifically because, you know, she said, I thought someone grabbed you. I thought an animal might have got you, you know. Um, I'm sure she was, you know, petrified. Uh, but, uh, she believed me when I told her about the story and, uh, she asked me a lot of questions and, you know, I said, well, it was just, you know, I felt like I was in this loving embrace when I was floating up there. Um, and as a kid, I thought it was really cool. You know, like I felt like I was flying in a <laughs> sense. Um, so that was my first experience. So, um, you know, to your viewers, this is not a normal experience for someone <laughs> to have, uh, for their first mediumship connection, but, you know, um, spirit, I think always tries to get our attention, uh, when we have these abilities to connect with spirit and, um, some of them are much more gentle, you know, than this fr from my experience, um, but as time went on, I had more spirit in interaction. Uh, and then um, I remember being in high school and in college and remembering that I would be sitting there and knowing when I was going to be called for a question, like way before, you know, maybe 20 seconds before someone would say, Anthony, can you add to this or can you give us the, you know, hypothesis of this or can you come up to the board? You know, I just knew, I knew immediately. And I started realizing like, why am I, why am I getting all this? So, you know, I went to college and I have a background um, in computer programming. And um, I also took some business law classes. And um, 
but when I got out, um, I decided that I wanted to do hair and my parents were mortified. So for most of my life, Violet, I worked in the hair salon. Um, and it wasn't until I started working with clients that I started receiving the information about clients that I didn't know anything about. Uh, and even um, some of the clients that I had that were regulars over a period of time, I would get information about their loved ones who passed. And I would hear, you know, my, my grandmother, her grandmother passed and her grandmother would tell me certain things while I'm doing her hair and I'm doing foils. And um, then, you know, within five minutes, she would tell me that, you know, I wanted to tell you, Anthony, my grandmother passed away recently. And, and she would basically repeat exactly what grandma had already said. <laughs> so I, um, it was freaking me out because I kept thinking, why is this happening to me? You know, which I think is normal, right, Violet? I mean, yeah. I mean when you first start having these experiences, you think, oh my God, am I crazy? I mean, and then, and then it was so um, persistent through most of my, um, my career. Um, and I, and, and it just ramped up. They became much more intense. And I can tell you a story. Um, and this is going in my book, cause I'm going to write a book. Um, and I, um, I was already, you know, working in the hair industry, I already had established clientele. Um, I lived in an area called Hamtramck, which is surrounded by Detroit. And, um, I um, had an apartment there and I found it. Um, I found it through the newspaper. This is before Google and we had iPhones and all of this. And, you know, you remember we would have to look for a place to live in the paper. Um, and so, um, you know, they had these apartments that were upper and lower, very much like Brooklyn, but they have those type of, you know, Brookstone type homes in um, Hamtramck. So I found this apartment and I must have looked at probably nine of them before I made my decision, met the landlords and this cute couple that was, um, she was their elderly. Um, she was German from Germany with a German accent and he was Greek. And um, I thought they were married, which I didn't realize that they weren't married until after three years of living there, <laughs> but they were such a cool couple. Uh, and they wanted a quiet tenant, someone who kept it clean. And so I took the apartment. And uh, after about a month living there, I started hearing these clapping noises, like where I would hear one solid clap really hard. And it was startling at first. Uh, and then um, I started having pictures simultaneously fall off the walls on opposite sides of the room. And um I had giggles, uh, these laughs in my room. And uh, I mean, it, it was crazy, but I'm, a lot more experience has happened, um, which I'm going to be putting in my book, which is just, I mean, I don't think the average person could have stayed there for three years. <laughs> and after going through two roommates, you know, um, and I was trying to save money for a house, um, and I went through two roommates and they, they couldn't live there. Um, and um, so I wanted to find out why all this was happening. And so I went to this um, medium for the first time in my life. And she was in Canada because we have, uh, you know, the Canada, we have Windsor right across the, the Detroit River. And she was recommended to me by a colleague at work. And so I make the appointment and I go. And the first thing she says is, you have a spirit in your house and the spirit knows your family. And I said, that's not possible. I found this apartment, you know, randomly. She says, no, spirit tells me that there's an affiliation with the, the house you're living in and your mother's family. And I said, it can't be. There's just no way. And um, she says to me, well, the spirit knows your grandmother and decided to write, reside in the house. Um, he was um, mugged at the corner during the depression and uh, at the corner of your street, which is only three houses down from where you live. 
and he knows that you know your family and so he's trying to get a hold of you get your get your awareness get you know um get your attention and um so you know of course i went back to my to my mom's family my mom and and she says well we lived you know in hamtramck and we lived across from dickerson elementary school well i lived across the street from dickerson elementary school but there's more than one home across the street she says to talk to my my aunt molly so i went to go talk to my aunt molly which was my mom's older sister and she says, well, we lived on Edwin Street. And I says, well, I live on Edwin Street. I kept thinking this can't be the same house. Well, anyway, a long story short, my, my aunt decides that um, she's going to take me out for breakfast. She's never been to my apartment. And it was right before I was getting ready to go to see my parents for Christmas. And um, she says, we'll have, you know, we'll, we'll have breakfast together and I'll pick you up. I says, okay, great. So she comes to my place and I can hear her in the back stairway. Um, now it had lightly snowed about an inch and a half that evening. And I could hear her, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And um, and I thought she fell or something, you know? So I opened up the back door and I said, are you all right? And she says, she says, I'm fine. She says, she's got tears pouring down her face. Like she's soaked, right? And she says, Anthony, I cannot believe you found this place. She says, and I'm getting shivers right now, so she must be in here. <laughs> she says, I can't believe you found this place. She says, we grew up in this house as a child during the Depression. So she's walking through the house. She's totally freaking out. I want to tell you, she just kept saying, oh, my God, oh, my God. And she's crying. And uh, the, the apartment was pretty much the same. It had the old farmhouse sink and the metal cabinets in the kitchen, and but pristine, pristine. She says it was exactly how it was when she lived there. And she remembers the gentleman that used to walk in front and my um, and used to converse with my grandmother from the balcony, which was on the second level of this home where my apartment was. And um, so uh, it was just amazing. Uh, this spirit, I had to help him cross over. And um, that was my first experience with that. It there, from that moment on, I started to, um, I went to, I went back to the medium to find out. And she says, Anthony, you're a medium. Like, this is what you have to do. Um. You know, I, for a while, I was kind of in denial that I was a medium. Uh, and then part of me was like, I just don't want to deal with this, right? I I don't want to deal with people's lives and um, their, their dead relatives. Um, I just don't see myself doing this. And that was truly how I felt. I, um, it wasn't until I moved, uh, I, I moved to Florida. And I started taking some classes because um, it, the, the, the spiritual activity never stopped. People were visiting me and I was getting downloads all the time. And I started taking classes there. And then when I moved to Asheville, I was like, well, I'm not going to do hair anymore. I'm going to focus on my spiritual path, do readings. I was already starting to do psychic readings. Um, no mediumship just yet. Uh, when I moved to Asheville... I realized I moved to an area that was not allowing readings, psychic readings, or tattoos were against the law. And I thought to myself, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a shock. Um, so for four years, I couldn't do any of that. However, I found a shaman uh, that I went to study with. And I studied with her for five years and my gifts were starting to really, you know, starting to mat, uh, um, excel, you know? Um, and, uh, she said to me, you're a medium. Like you have, like she, she studied with the Lakota Indians and she said, you're one of these people who connect with spirit. And, um, 
by this time I was already, my, my salon was busy in Asheville. I was doing high-end weddings uh, for hair for the, these high-end weddings on the weekends. And I had no time to study. So I decided that, um, or the energy. So I decided I had to, you know, start breaking down my time and start studying locally. And by this time, that ban of doing psychic readings and tattoos lifted. And um, I studied with Jill Jackson. She was a medium here locally in Asheville. And I took her classes. And she propelled me to go study with, you know, mediums after her. And uh, so I studied with James Bond Prague and uh, went to Omega several times. And then I did his certification and simultaneously studying with him, I studied with Mavis Patilla um, in person. And I took all her classes in person and loved her training. I, I loved I loved James's training too. He's a great teacher as well. Uh, and very funny. They're both very funny. Um, and um, just um, it 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 it. Uh, made me decide to go into study trance with Tony Stockwell. And so I took a lot of Tony's trance classes and mediumship classes as well. And that was amazing. Um, and uh, still uh, take Tony's classes uh, from time to time, because I think education is important for us as mediums. And we continue to grow and evolve and you know, education is great. And there's always something that you're going to learn that maybe, um, or revisit that you may maybe need to revisit as a medium, right? Well, Anthony, you're talking about some terms, <clears throat> excuse <laughs> me, that the listeners may not understand. So what is mediumship? What is trans mediumship? What is physical mm -hmm. mediumship? Because those are words that we kind of throw around and people that you know, the difference between a psychic and a medium, right? Sure. In spiritualism, there's a definite difference, right? Um, explain to us what those terms mean to you. Well, um, as a psychic, um, not every psychic is a medium, okay? So um, a psychic is um, having the ability to raise your energy, um, expand your auric field, and gently blend your org field with the person in front of you. So everybody has energy. We're all energy. Animals are energy. The surface of this table is energy. Um, and all plants, all living things have an aura. So we as psychics blend in that org field gently. And we're able to read and feel the energetic feelings of that person's life. Um, and each psychic works differently um, as, as a medium uh, as well. Um, and as a psychic, we, you know, we're able to use our clairs, which is our clair audience, uh, where we could hear things, clairvoyance, where we could see things, um, clairsentience, where we feel the feelings, uh, claircognizance, there's an inner knowing. Um, I myself am, am very clair clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient. And um, so when I read, I'm able to blend with that person. I'm able to see their life of where they were as a child and the experiences that they've had. Um, I'm able to see where they progressed, uh, maybe the work they do. Um, usually, the, you know, I'll get how many degrees they have. Um, and education and you know where their life has brought them to where they are presently and then i'm able to see a lot of things that they are looking into or that they're interested in or maybe there's a change in their life that's coming that i see that you have the ability to change in your life going forward which is the future right so um that would be psychic right also, you can also connect with that person's spirit team or spirit guide. And the spirit guide will also give you information in pertaining to that person's life. And I do that when I'm working psychically. Um, 
mediumistically, not every, I, I should go back just a bit, um, not every psychic is a medium. So we raise up our energy, right? Um, we build our energy and um, that's how we expand our org field. As a medium, you have to build your energy much higher and much stronger to connect with the spirit world, which is a much higher um, uh, obtainment. And the spirit world in physics will slow down their energy to connect with the medium's um, vibration. And um, that's how we connect with the spirit world. And so as a medium, we're connecting with loved ones who have lived here in the physical world that are now in heaven or in the spirit world, however you look at that. And as a medium, we make that connection. Um, not every psychic is a medium, but every medium is a psychic. So that's the difference there. Um, what was other, the other question you mentioned? Trance and physical mediumship, the different types of mediumship. Um, yeah, trance is when we are going into an altered state. Um, it's almost an altered state of sleep. Um, and it actually is the connection of the minds of the spirit. So you're, you're blending with the spirit world a little closer. Um, I would say deeper than doing just mental mediumship. Um, mental mediumship, I'm very much awake when I'm connecting with spirit and we're still in a slightly altered trance state when we make that connection because we have to get all of our analytical mind out of the way to connect with spirit right um in trance you're you're going into that much altered state and surrendering more and it really is people think that when you go into trance that the spirit world actually blends with your body um that I have to disagree with. I believe they're blending with your mind, right? It's the blending of the minds. And so the mind kind of takes, you're blending your mind and the spirit's mind and you're surrendering a little deeper. So the characteristics of that spirit, the mannerisms of that spirit will come through the medium. And um, at times they'll even use the voice, right? So they'll use your vocal cords and that's when you're really able to um, get deeper. And that trance takes time. Um, I, um, I don't teach trance because I don't feel like I'm really quite there yet with the teaching part of it. Um, I, I feel that, um, you know, it just takes years. Like there's different segments of mediumship that I feel takes years to develop. You know, it's a kind of an unfolding of your own personal life and then your, your, you know, your mediumship life. Um, so um, have I done trance? Yes, I have done trance. Have they spoke through me? Yes, they have. Um, have I taught a class in trance yet? No. <laughs> but I plan to, you know, I plan to in the future. Um, and physical mediumship is another side of mediumship where, you know, we're having the phenomena of the spirit world actually being able to, um, um, there's, there's different modalities of, of physical mediumship, but they, there is physical phenomena that it happens from the spirit world. And, People think, well, you know, physical mediumship is really about, you know, um, a performance or um, actions. Um, how do I, how to explain it? Like it's entertainment. And actually it's, it's all about healing, just like mental mediumship. Um, there, um, if, if, we're, if we're waiting for um, the phenomenon, the phenomenon is really to prove that the spirit world is there, right? Um, such as in table tipping, we see um, that the spirit world can create the phenomena and the energy force in table tipping, um, where they're able to lift the table or tip the table um, or do wraps on the table. Um, but there's more to it than just that. 
there's actually communication through physical mediumship. And there always is the high intelligence that should be backing the communication. So if you're not having the intelligence behind the physical mediumship, then I don't think that it's actual real physical mediumship. Then I think something fraudulent's going on. Um, because through, um, let's say, for example, through table tipping, you know, the table will actually lean into the person sitting at the table or standing at the table, and they will determine who they want to communicate with. And that it's a pretty forceful lean. And um, and then there's an alphabet that, um, you know, someone at the table needs to be ahead of um, uh, being in charge of the letters of the alphabet because the spirit world will lean that table so many times into the person and spell out what they're trying to say. Um, and, and it's really, and, and they, they will, they will change their yes and no answers. Uh, they will, they will, um, it, it's never always the same. It seems like it goes a certain way for a while and then they change it up on you. <laughs> um, but it, it's amazing though, the vibration that you feel on the table with everyone's hands um, um, and fingertips just lightly put on the table. Everyone's hands is, are above the table. And um, until you experience that, um, it looks as though the people are doing, uh, moving the table, you know, creating the activity of the table, um, but they're not moving it. It's the spirit world. Um, the actual energy around the table is helping to support the energy for the spirit world. So again, we're all energy, but the ener the spirit world will take that energy from all the sitters sitting around the table and build that energy up in the circle. And they will use their own energy to actually do the communication. So it's it's that's just one element of physical mediumship. Um, I, I'm a physical mediumship, and I'm really kind of a beginner. Uh, the spirit world communicates through me through light. So a lot of times when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one readings with my clients, and not all the time, um, but I would say at least once a week, I have lights flicker in here and flash. Um, sometimes when I've done Zoom readings, we've seen, you know, um, flashes of light or we've seen orbs go across the screen uh, that's been interesting um, I have when I realized that I was able to um, th that I was a physical medium is when I demonstrated in front of a large audience here in Hendersonville locally about three years ago and um, I had almost 100 people in the audience and I was commuting, you know, getting on stage. And for those uh, of you that don't know what platform mediumship is, is when the medium gets in front um, of, of an audience, uh, very similar to uh, James Bond Prague or, or um, uh, John Edward, um, where we connect with your loved ones in spirit. And we, you know, describe the person of how they passed and um, their personality um, the experiences that they shared with their loved one that only they would know. And then, of course, the healing message uh, for the person in the audience. And so I, you know, I, I'm up there for two hours uh, doing this in my presentations. Uh, and I was making a connection, maybe, you know, I don't know, I was on my third connection, 15 minutes into the program. And this huge flash of light flashed above my head. And um, there was no noise, but the flash was so intense that the audience, I could hear them hush. Like I can hear them, um, you know, they were, they were, they were, um, how, what, what's the word I'm, I'm using, I'm trying to look for, um, stunned. Yeah, they were, they were shuddering. I could hear their voices in the background after this happened, right? They were like, <gasps> You know, and, yeah, and um, and I I said, oh my gosh, did we lose the light bulb? Like I thought that like a light bulb burned out on stage. 
Now, mind you, we didn't have a sound. We had a sound tech, but we didn't have a light, um, a light tech for this event. And um, the the sound person just turned down these blue lights um, because the bright lights were too bright for me to see the audience. So they put these blue lights over me. And um, I could still see the audience, you know, with that type of light. And so it was just set very standard, very basic lighting in this building. And um, and the lights were in the back of the audience. So they were on dim. So the lights were on in the room. It wasn't like we're sitting in a complete dark arena here um, or, you know, building. And so uh, I, I started to make my next connection and all of a sudden it happened again, but it came from a different area this time off to the left. And it startled me so bad. I took two steps back because it was that intense. Wow. Uh, I know, I know. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, what is happening? And I heard again, the audience, you know, they're, they, they just, you know, were startled. And I said, oh my gosh. And I, you know, I, I, as, as we work as mediums, you know, my focus was to not go in my analytical mind because I'm in the middle of connecting with, with someone here from spirit and I don't want to lose the connection. Right. So there are all this pressures going on. There's this analytical part of my mind and then the mental mediumship going on. And I'm starting to have this panic because I'm being interrupted. Um, and it's creating feelings like I, I it's startling me. So, <laughs> which I think it would startle anyone being on stage. You know, you're like, oh my God, like, what is that? It was like an M80 going off without the sound. That's how I, how I can explain it, right? Wow. It was really intense. And so as the evening goes on, it happens uh, three more times. And the last time that it does it, it was the most intense. I took three steps back on stage and the audience was like, what is going on? I hear people saying like, what is that, right? Can you tell us what, uh, what the lights are? And I said, you know, I've come to a realization being here that there's some physical mediumship going on. And I had to explain to the audience what physical mediumship was. And, um, you know, at the same time, I was in a state of shock. I, I have to tell you. Um, but I, my, my husband was there with his mother. Uh, I would say most of the people in the audience saw it. I had a few of my students who were sitting in the audience, so they witnessed it. Um, I had a few of my neighbors there who witnessed it. I had one neighbor who sat right next to another neighbor that didn't see anything. Um, but the but the neighbor that she came with said that she saw the whole thing was freaking out, right? Like, what was that, right? So I, I really believe that the spirit world gives certain people that experience that can handle that experience, and they don't give the experience to the people who can handle it. Right. I understand you know? that totally. Yeah. This, um, that was, it, those were amazing descriptions, Anthony, of... So that people have an idea because I feel like not everyone understands mediumship, um, mm -hmm. that everyone understands what it is. Some people are scared of it. We're going to have to have you back to talk a little bit more about mediumship and that. See, Anthony and I, I can just, we could just talk all day, honestly. <laughs> we could just go on and on. But this was really, really awesome. And table tipping, we have to get you back to talk about that because for those that um, check out my website, I do table tipping at the center, but I do it as a private event. So only certain people are invited to attend. And that's for students that want to develop their mediumship because it's a great way to kind of start developing those skills and being able to communicate with spirit and um, being able to develop. So more than just a class, everyone that attends gets to participate and everybody gets to be part of that, which is really amazing. And so we'll have to have you back on and talk because everybody does table tipping differently. I've learned that. And there are lots of different ways to do table tipping or table turning as they call it. Um, and mm -hmm. so there are different ways, but 
Before we close out today, because I love your stories, I could talk to you forever. We need to do this again and again. Talk to us a little bit. If somebody wanted to connect with you, Anthony, to do a reading or whatever, how can they find you and um, what things do you offer? Well, I um, I offer personal one-on-one readings um, in person. I also do them by phone. And I also do them on Zoom. And it's really the same energy because people say, well, isn't an in-person reading better? And it's not necessarily better. I, I actually, in, in some cases, don't even like to see the person on the other end because I feel like to me, I, 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 um, I, I feel like I don't, I don't get to see any facial expressions. I just, you know, I just connect with the energy. It's the same energy that you're connecting with, with your, with your client whether they're in person or not. Um, and um, they can go to my website, which is ashevillemedium.com. So all the appointments are booked through there. Um, I do group readings as well. So I do small groups. I do couples readings. Um, and I also do, like I said earlier, when I mentioned I do platform uh, mediumship for large audiences as well. So I, um, I teach, I teach classes locally. I teach uh, classes in Lilydale and different parts of the United States. And I've taught um, uh, mediumship and uh, did platform mediumship in parts of Canada. So um, I have clients from all over. Um, I had, a, I had uh, this past few years, I've been getting a lot of international um, clients uh, from Poland and uh, Germany and um, and uh, France um, and from England actually, which I mean, there's a lot of med- mediums in England, but I've had like four or five clients from England, so that's been uh, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you can go to my website. All my appointments are booked through my website. My schedule's there, and um, I'm so excited to come out to your spiritual center and teach and. Um, you know, we have a lot of fun um, teaching and mediumship. Uh, I give you the foundations and the essentials to learn and understand, um, you know, how um, our, how to work from within, how to connect with our clairs and how the clairs are associated um, with how we work, you know, um, with our um, chakras and how the relation is with the chakras and the, and the clairs. Um, and I also teach uh, in my mediumship uh, psychometry. And psychometry is to me, the element of getting someone to feel. So I, I try to get my students to feel. Um, you know, like when we get in front of somebody, we tend to get intimidated, right? When we're trying to read with them, which we do in the exercises in class. But in the beginning, I want you to be able to have an, a photograph or a piece of jewelry or an item that uh, belonged to somebody, and you will bring that to class. And what we will do is we'll pair off. You don't want to share any information about the object or the photograph. Um, and you'll, you'll swap. The, the person with, that you're working with will become the medium, uh, and they will read your item for you they will they will go in um, work in the psychometry and get with the feelings so um, working with your feelings as a medium is the most important thing uh, that gets you to surrender out of your mind and not having a person that you're reading for and is jumping into that can be a little intimidating right is the person sitting right in front of you and they're looking at you. And if you've never done this before, or maybe, you know, maybe in your beginning of your mediumship or you've had experiences, it can be a little intimidating, right? You get nervous. Um, But when you're sitting with an object and you're holding the object, the object is not intimidating. It's really like you're able to surrender more with the object and go with your feelings and get out of your mind. And so that builds your mediumship because mediumship is all about feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I had I, I learned that from Mavis Patilla because she 
was very, uh, very uh, much into, you know, if you're if you're stuck, if you see an image and you don't know what the image means, right? Or you go with your feelings with that image. What? How are you feeling? And then the story will unfold, right? So that. that's what I that's what I teach. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we look forward mm -hmm. to having Anthony in Denver. Uh, I want to thank you, Anthony, for taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> And having you, as you can tell, we can have a good time. We'll definitely have you back on here several times so we can go even in deeper into some of this information. For those that are watching, make sure you like, comment, and follow us on your favorite platforms. We'd love to hear from you. That also helps us uh, refer us to your friends and family that might be interested in listening to our podcast. We'd love to see them on the show. And I hope that you have a sacred and magical week. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Violet.